What risks is there to OFW working? Um, I'm going to go through a few of them. Um, nearly all of them come from experience and people I know. The first example is the oil and gas industry in Australia. Um, sounds a bit funny. Um, it wasn't actually the oil and gas industry that was recruiting. It was a recruiting agency that then charged fees for processing your visa as X, Y, Z, then pocket the money and disappear. That happened in the last couple of months. Um, when I say last couple of months, because obviously they want bits of money off you on a regular basis, but that's the most recent. Um, I know of other people that have paid money to people to organize their travel, etc., and pocket it and disappeared it in the Philippines. And then we start moving on to the more severe stuff. There's a British expat that one night in Hong Kong, he got a knock at the door, and this woman he didn't know said, Oh, I have this girl or woman, you know, she was still quite young, but she was. 20s maybe early 20s um, she she will work for you and he's like well I don't need anybody I can look she'll do anything you want anything and pushed her through the door sort of thing and ended up well they ended up getting married but basically nothing was off the table she he could do what she what he wanted with her the woman actually selling this woman basically was her aunt it was actually a relative and she'd actually persuaded the family to let her go to Hong Kong and the first thing she did was try and sell her off. Um, these sort of things go on and family are often involved in some of these. Um, some of the bad families, should I say, because not... <laughs> this is the problem, a lot of the negative stuff always comes to the surface but the good stuff rarely gets talked about. So when I say families, they're normally bad families. Um, but it's something to be aware of. The next relates to going into countries you're not allowed to work. This is also very common because what happens is you'll get a contract to go to say Dubai and end up in Kurdistan and other countries that are on the watch list and not allowed for Filipino workers because what they do is they put people in transit and they just smuggle them in across the borders those are things to be aware of and now we're on to the other nitty gritty stuff the ones where you get locked away they take your passport and they beat you every day places like Saudi Arabia love that sort of stuff and it goes on on a regular basis they abuse Filipino workers there personally I, w I think some of these places shouldn't even be allowed to hire Filipinos um, shouldn't be allowed to hire anybody because they're just animals um, but th what concerns me most is the lack of information the lack of data that's on the internet wherever that actually states what's happened to a lot of these people because a lot of it is tied in with politics in the same way you'll have the odd servant worker etc turn up in the UK in central London that could be from anywhere um, that's been thrown out by some Saudi official that's got diplomatic immunity those things happen too often and they're not going to change but at the same time it does sicken me so you've got those different things but bear in mind people die all the time people are killed all the time People have their passports stolen from them and then they're kept in almost slave-like conditions or should I say slave-like conditions um, and then they refuse to pay people if they leave etc and this is where the work contracts become a problem because if you're tied to an employer for a year you're stuck there. Um, it's very difficult to get out of the country especially if they're holding your passport. Um, I know in I think it was Qatar if you leave with breaching your contract I don't think you're allowed back for four years so there's a lot of reasons people get stuck in this loop but what annoys me most is people don't talk about the sacrifices and the bad stuff that does go on it's often buried I mean while I was in Oman there was a Filipina that was a gym instructor that was allegedly killed by her boyfriend and that was the story there was no real information this is in the location that I'm actually working in. You know, the 
we were only aware of it from reading the newspaper. We weren't aware of it on the actual physical site, which all this stuff gets buried under the carpet, which is really concerning. Um, so, would I recommend somebody working as an RFW? I believe you knew the job was safe. I mean, my brother-in-law works in Macau. I know several other people that have even went to Syria before the uprising. Um, I know people that went to Nigeria to to train the guys in the uh, oil fields, etc. The the fact is, you're at risk of exploitation. The exploitation starts in the Philippines but it will continue wherever you're going for example philippines they're charging you for fees of transportation flights and everything else did you know it's actually illegal to do that if you work in the uk it's illegal for an employer to actually charge an employee to work in the uk those fees just so you're aware of it because i still see people saying oh yeah this is this they're double charging um, and the, the whole point here is just have a deep hard think about it if you don't know people go in there are you running a risk to your own life and you're not really thinking about it until something really bad happens because you could even be sold into slavery um, into the sex trade there's lots of bad things out there and the only reason I push it forward is unless you're actually aware where you're going and can trust people around you, you're putting a lot of trust in people. You have no idea what they're going to do with you. Um, love to hear somebody's feedback on it because I know that there's a lot of OFWs out there. But like I'm saying, if you're going to do something completely new and into a new country, etc., are you aware of what you're getting yourself into? On a final note something I nearly got roped into myself was a recruitment for the oil field in a Middle Eastern country um, it's not in a war conflict but there was something just not right with it um, the one of 350 people to go I said I can organize it because I do know some people that own recruitment agencies um, and some I can actually trust but later on I found out that it wasn't an extra 350 people they'd lost 350 because they'd actually breached the local laws relating to accommodation these are uh, port cabins out in the middle of the desert where people are sleeping 12 people to a room it's actually illegal the, the maximum is six um, so I basically turned the contract down I could have made a lot of money on that I'll be honest with you but at the same time I do have integrity and basically told me shove it alright thanks for watching